You can't find my voice anywhere. Ever fitting a sick onion. As being things that are resting yan, eh? Vanuable talks to things like why and cattle. Let me stress you about because let us touch all the time. Who talked about her as in HIV positive? He just wanted to leave. You know, he just wanted something that he would drink and he would just stand up and, you know, walk again. People can move around between acceptance, denial, anger. Kabzela had that classical. You know, would sit down with him in the room and would first time, and I said, you know, I think it's important that you, you, you have to go into antiretrovirals. We sat down, we cancelled him, and he accepted it. And he accepted his HIV status. But then he would come in the other time and said, you know what, this HIV story, I don't believe it. And um, 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 uh, this antiretroviral treatment, I want to get off it. And for me, that indicated to me that uh, um, Kabzela was not, was moving around between acceptance and denial. I literally got 10 requests a day via fax, email and phone of people who claimed to have a cure, or people who know someone who can help. And, and you know, I... The difficult thing about that entire period was half the people actually meant well and wanted to genuinely help. You know, half of them were opportunistic. You know, uh, they, because of who he, who he was, wanted to be a part of the whole process. We went to see Irene. Irene is is a more of a, um, a spiritual. A, 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 thingy organization that they that she runs there you know with her you you take the herbs but you take the herbs with faith when Gabzella came he's a lovely person when I met him I was quite impressed with him we gave him the medication he used the medication for the first two months he did incredibly well obviously you want to leave and now you are thinking maybe this will work faster and you take that one and you drink. And then someone comes with something else and they say, no, 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 I know it for sure, it works. And you take it and you drink it. You know, now you don't know which one is working, which one is not working. His moving from acceptance to denial made him very vulnerable. Support Jar all the time. That's more than more than Kenny Wade can now. Thanks for the support, Buffett. The boy is showing. Hey, I'm lashing. So tag it at that. Go pay that. Don't you find again, Buffett? Support. Let us learn from Kaba's life. I'm um, Dr. Rudy Onya. Uh, this is the South African Traditional Medicines Research Group. And we research traditional medicines looking at um, activity of various traditional plants uh, against common diseases or illnesses that um, are particularly relevant to the South African context. So things like TB, HIV, malaria would be the, the, the prime sort of research areas. The regulatory systems for medicines have evolved with Western medicine. They've evolved to regulate the active principle in a medicine. And usually how pharmaceutical companies develop a medicine would be to ultimately end up with a single compound that produces an effect. With herbal medicines, it's very different because you're not dealing with a product that contains one specific compound. For example, taking a St. John's wort or taking an um, African potato, there are masses of compounds in these products. So you're actually taking a whole plant or a crude extra extract of that plant that contains numerous different compounds. Uh, I'm Dr. Gilbert uh, Mutlalipula Matsavisa. I'm the head of the Indigenous Knowledge Systems of Health at the, the Medical Research Council. 
We research uh, traditional medicines. A lot has been said about African potato. And there have been a number of claims where people are using it, you know, to stimulate their immune system, where people are using it, especially those people who are, have HIV and AIDS. Because African potato is being claimed to boost the immune system. And uh, we want to validate that. We want, again, you know, to, to test that. The African potato, we, we're not even sure, you know, what effects that might have on antiretrovirals. We know that it has an effect on CD4 cells. Now, the HIV virus lives within CD4 cells. If these agents are having an effect on the CD4 cells, one of the things it could be doing is stirring up the HIV virus and causing the HIV virus to replicate more. What I would suggest people doing is to, to be very cautious with the amount of African potato they eat. If they consume it as part of their general diets, by all means, that's great. But if they're taking it in excessive amounts, they need to be very cautious and I would um, advise to, to rather wait until more research becomes available. Antiretroviral agents, as we know, in particular, many of them are metabolized by the liver. Quite a few of the agents labeled naturopathic that are sold as immune boosters or as um, uh, antidepressants also have an effect on the liver. When more than one agent is working on the liver at the same time, those agents can interact with each other and may cause the one to become more or break down more quickly or to have a variety of different effects. And that is why we're very anxious that when people take in these naturopathic um, agents, as well as the antiretrovirals, these naturopathic agents can be playing havoc with the antiretrovirals. There is not a shadow of doubt in our minds that to date there is no cure for HIV. All right? What we do know from good worldwide evidence-based scientific literature is that the only thing that makes an impact on HIV progression is antiretroviral agents. These naturopathic um, agents to, you know, in terms of all good scientific evidence, do have not been shown to make an impact on the progression of HIV. <laughs>